to another episode of Project Miata. On today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to do an oil change on a specifically Mazda Miata. I know all you guys, most of you guys know how to do your own oil change, but I'm gonna give you a little bit of tips for Mi Miata and specifically. When I had a Mazda Miata, I had a 1990 Miata before I purchased this one. When I used to go drifting and go for a long session, I would get this ticking noise. Basically what happened was the oil, I had enough oil in the car, but the dilemma was that the oil got so hot, it broke down and thinned out. There wasn't enough lubrication in the top of the, the head, which are the valves and the lifters and all that stuff. So you would get this ticking sound. I bought regular GTX. I wanted to get uh, 2050, but they didn't have that in stock. This is the closest thing, but it's a Mazda Miata. You don't need synthetic. Um, this will do. And maybe it's probably better that I don't go too thick because the, the car doesn't have too many miles. It has 135,000 miles. Um, and then the other stuff that we're gonna add, I'll show you right now. This stuff, um, oil treatment. Basically, this stuff is like oil, but it has more zinc in it. When it gets really hot temperatures, not break down as easy. So it stays thicker and it keeps the motor more lubricated. And this is what you need. This thing's like $3. You're supposed to add this whole thing with four quarts of oil. I think the minimum is four quarts of oil. It says right here, yeah. It says add one bottle of this for every for four to five quarts of oil. So um, it doesn't mean fill it out. You have to substitute this for if your car takes four, you don't put four and then add this because there'll be too much oil. Uh, what you want to do is uh, add this and then fill up the oil until you get to where you need to be on your on your oil dipstick. All right. So the tip that I want to give you guys um, that I learned at Midas when I used to do oil changes there is every time you take this off. Put it on here right where the where the car closes because there was times where we would forget we would pull the car out of the bay and we'll leave this open and then the customers would complain that there's like oil leaking and stuff like that um, this way when you're done with your oil change right that goes down and you close it you go hey why is it not closing oh that's there i always thought that was a neat trick I never did that personally, it was just protocol when I worked at that specific uh, Midas. So I, I always do it because I, I think it's a smart idea actually, just in case that ever does happen. So here's another tip I want to share with you guys. Um, I'm gonna, I have this like sitting around in the corner of 2050 motor oil. Uh, the plug is still draining on the bottom. As you can see, it's still draining. So. Uh, there's you're not gonna get all the dirt the oil with dirt in it So what I do is I'll pour some clean in here. So it kind of flushes it out uh, This is like a half a quart of oil. You don't really have to do this um, I'm actually just doing this because this is sitting around and I don't really care for it and I'm not gonna use 2050 I'm gonna use 1040 so I was gonna let it go through the system and see what happens try to get it all clean Oh, yeah, it's looking cleaner already <laughs> Cause it was really black. I don't know if you guys can see, but uh, it's coming out a little crisper. That's another thing you can do, guys. All right, guys, so I came across something really sketchy and I hope you guys can learn from this lesson. Uh, so I didn't record taking out the drain plug for oil. I'm sure all you guys know how to do that. I did, uh, as I took it off, it was a little crunchy. So I drained the oil as I put that drain plug back in. Uh, it's someone over tightened it and, and basically messed up the threads so it keeps spinning but it, it's tight on there enough so it doesn't leak but that's a dilemma now i have to change that oil pan because that's always going to be on my head thinking like dude that can leak any second but the good thing is to listen and look for any lights of oil it has an oil pressure gauge so that's a good sign i don't know if that bolt comes off or whatever that's a dilemma but i'm scared now there's probably like metal shavings in the engine now which is sketchy but it's a miata these are really reliable cars um, and this the lesson that you guys can learn here is please work on your cars because if i would have took this to a lube shop and didn't work on my car i wouldn't know about this problem the lube shop wouldn't tell you because they think that uh if you tell them they're gonna they're gonna try you're gonna you're gonna try to blame them so that by them covering their ass they won't say anything if it works it works they'll get it out of there um, if they're nice enough they'll let you know but uh, lesson learned there, work on your cars and you know what's wrong with your car. All right guys. All right, so we're gonna add that treatment in now. Uh, this should be pretty good stuff, there it is. You see how thick it is, look at that stuff. It's like maple syrup. Look at that. 
All right, so now we're gonna add the GTX. I ended up putting the whole um, TPS oil treatment in there. I let it sit for about 10 minutes. Now it should probably be at the bottom of the engine now. So I'm gonna add the regular oil now. I'm probably gonna only, oh well. I'm only gonna add a few quarts. This stuff's like water. So that's one, three. So we've added three quarts so far. So now I'm gonna let that oil get to the bottom. I'm gonna make sure that that bolt's not leaking down there that, that someone over tightened and stripped. And uh, I'm gonna check my dipstick in a bit. So I'm hoping you guys know this, that uh, this seal, you wanna put some oil on it. So what I usually do is get the old one and just rub it like this. And lubricates it, so that's pretty good. We're gonna install the oil filter. It's on this side, you can get it from here, no problem. Always make sure there's no, that gasket, because those gaskets do come off the oil filter, the one I just lubricated, that doesn't get stuck on the engine block, because sometimes that can happen. Because if you, if there's a, there's a gasket stuck in there, you put another oil filter, once you turn the car on, it's gonna shoot through that, that gasket where they meet. All right, so we're gonna turn on the Miata, because uh, the oil is full on the, on the dipstick, but the, it has a brand new oil filter. And the oil filter is dry, so we're gonna have to. Um, I'll check out those cars on Vortex. These are gonna go soon on our store that we're working on, our new online store. Check that out. Pretty dub, it's backwards right now, but whatever. Pretty cool. Um, like I was saying though, we're gonna turn it on so the oil, the new oil filter gets some oil on it. Turn on there. There it goes. There's our oil pressure gauge. Right in the middle. It's at 60. If that thing ever drops past 30, turn your car off. Something is wrong, either low on oil, you have no oil. Or your sensor's out. One or two. Alright, so the head got some oil. Let's turn it off. So the head got oil and I'm sure the oil filter is full of oil now, so we're gonna be low on oil because there's some living inside of the oil filter. So as I predicted, we're, we're down a little less than, a little less than half an oil, half a quart. Just wanna add a little bit more. I think that should do it. And I'll check it again. All right guys, so the oil was right where we needed, right on the F on that line perfectly. So that completes the oil change. I didn't get too much into detail on how to do oil change. I'm sure if you go on YouTube, you can find like 10,000 videos on how to do an oil change. And I'm probably on a Miata as well. Uh, I just want to show you a little bit of tricks. Uh, the last trick of the day that I want to show you guys and then I'm going to sign out and I'll see you guys another time for another episode of Project Miata is uh, I have my car jacked up on all of the, I'm kind of out of white balance out, but whatever. Uh, I have my car jacked up on all corners with jack stands. Uh, I'm gonna do another project. I'm, I'm, I'm debating on painting my rims right now uh, to like a graphite gray gunmetal. So they look like, I've done it before in my 90 Miata, it looks pretty good. Kinda looks like Watsonabis. So as I jacked it up on all fours, those are pretty sturdy. We got those at Harbor Freight, they work. We used them on the Evo, Evo 9 project. Uh, I put this tire with this guy, just in case those go out, I don't die and get smashed down there. And at the same time, always safety first guys. This guy is just like right against the, the floorboard. Uh, it would probably, if the car did fall off, it would probably go through the floorboard, but uh, it'll keep weight off of me, and or if whatever, I'm down there, it'll give me time to escape or whatever. So um, those are the last, the last few tips that I wanted to give you guys. So uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time, bye. All right guys, so I decided to paint uh, this bumper because my car looks like a whoop de ride. I'll pull up the, the Urban Dictionary of that, but uh, basically it looks pretty ghetto. <laughs> so that's halfway and it looks pretty decent.